Hello everybody, welcome back. Today's date is May 25th. Happy Memorial Day. What are you doing on this wonderful day? Well, let's do some sewing and chatting. Got some topics that you all can uh, participate in. So stay with me, don't go away, I'll be right back. All right, so let's get chatting here. First of all, someone made a comment they were they did not politely ask, they demanded, what size are those masks? What size are the masks? You know, everybody, it'd be nice if you'd say, hi, could you please tell me what size the masks are? But you know what? I'm going to be a nice guy and I'm going to tell you because uh, I'm just a nice guy. But I will tell you in the future, if you're going to ask me things and you want free information, be a little courteous. Your mama better teach you some manners and say please and thank you. So now, these masks, these pleated masks I'm making are eight squared, eight inches squared, okay? All right, so now, let's move forward from that. All right, so, the topic of conversation that I've seen on the sewing groups, and I'd like you ladies to answer this for me because I wanna know why. So I wrote and I said, you know, in the 1950s and prior, housewives, and this, this whole thing was inspired by some comments I read online, and also someone wrote that singer, I'll post it up on the screen here, that singer site, that singer uh, posted about the housewife having to put her makeup on and her hair and look pretty when she sews, so if her husband comes home unexpectedly, she'll be ready for him. I'm sure many of you have seen that. But anyway, I said, after reading some of these posts, I said, how is it that women in the 50s and prior knew how to run a mechanical sewing machine and make their own garments? Whereas we hear from women today that say, um, I, cannot afford to buy gar I cannot afford to buy the fabric to make my own garments, but they're buying fabric to make a quilt. And a quilt costs a hell of a lot more money to make than a blouse or a shirt or a pair of pants. And then some of these women are spending up to $15,000 for a sewing machine, but saying fabric to buy to make a garment is too much money. But they're buying fabric to make a quilt. Now, so in the comments below, I want you to tell me, uh, rationalize that for me and explain to me what the thought process of that is, because to me, I would say, what if you bought a $300 sewing machine, then you would have money to buy fabric to make a, a, a garment. Doesn't that make more sense? Uh, or is it that old saying that women really don't say what they mean? In other words, should they just be saying, I'm too lazy and I don't want to make my own garments, I just want to make a quilt because I don't want to look at myself in the mirror to measure my body. So I just say it's cheaper to make, uh, to buy a garment off the rack. But then if that's the case, why isn't it cheaper just to buy a $300 sewing machine instead of a sewing machine that costs anywhere from eight to $20,000? So now I say this because I'm confused with some of the responses. And then the response, the other question was, how is it that women knew how to run a mechanical sewing machine back in the 50s and prior when there was no internet, no Google, no YouTube, and uh, today, people can just Google this information to learn how to do things. They can YouTube things how to do things. Uh, there's so much more. The instruction manual, too. How come no one reads instruction manuals today? So how is it that we have so much more accessibility to education today, but people act more helpless than they did in the 50s? How is it a 1950s housewife woman knew how to do so much more, and she was, take, she was not independent because she was taken care of by her husband who worked? She was not out there working. Whereas today, women are working. Women are more independent thinking because they're accomplishing more with jobs and everything. But yet there are so many women today that act more helpless than the women from the 1950s. Now, as you all know, I am not a, I am not a conservative. I am a liberal. I am a Democrat, liberal, gay man. But I'm asking on a viewpoint of trying to differentiate, like, why is it that women act helpless today? when in the 1950s, they could do everything. 
What is the difference? I need to know that. Uh, I'd like your opinions below because this is this is this is really getting serious now. Why are there so many helpless women today? And when I say why so many women, it's because I see women posting this helpless comments on Facebook. Could you please tell me why, what this foot is that came with my machine? When we all know, if you just open up your instruction manual, you'll see a list of accessories that came with your machine, and that foot is there to tell you what it is. But why, are, why aren't these, some of these women looking this information up? And then, like gentlemen will say, oh, I just saw that uh, heavy-duty mechanical singer machine you, you, you uh, posted, but that's not available here in the UK. Can you tell me the difference between that? The only model available in the UK is this model. And I said, well, why don't you look up both models, look at the, look at the American side, and look at our side, and look at sites that carry the machine, both, both models, and compare it. Oh, I don't have access to that. All of a sudden, that's the answer. Am I supposed to feel sorry for you? Like, how come I have access to it? You have access to write me and ask me these questions, and I have access to go to a UK website to look up your model number, but for some reason you don't have access to look up me from the UK of the US website? That doesn't make sense to me. It sounds like you just want to be spoon-fed or you're looking for attention. And guess what? You're not going to get either from me. What I'm going to give you is I'm going to... Uh, call you out in public and say, because you already called yourself out in public, and I'm going to say, what's the deal, dude? What's the deal? Why can't you look at this information on your own? Are you helpless or are you just high? Are you too burned out that you're not thinking for yourself? Yeah, this is, a, this is a tell it like it is video, baby. This is, we're getting real here because if a 1950s housewife can do more than you, there's a problem today. There is a problem today. How far did we really advance with equal opportunity for everybody? Because another person posted uh, an answer on, on Facebook when I asked these questions, and she said it's learned, it's helplessness, it's learned hel helplessness behavior. In other words, parents today are doing everything for their children and not teaching them how to do things on their own. I had a teacher that responded and said that the kids come in and they have no care in the world. They're not, they don't care about anything. And if you, if you don't pass them, the parents come in, they're upset. But the parents are not doing anything when the parent-teacher conferences and the teacher, and teacher says to the parent, your child's not doing their homework. And all of a sudden, we, she finds out that the parents have been doing the homework for the kid. Which carries on to adulthood, especially if they're wealthy parents and they want to get their kid into an Ivy League school. Now, we go to that, well, that scandal of those actresses that were paying to get their, their stupid kids into Ivy League school because they couldn't pass grade on their own. But you know what? That just doesn't happen. with that, that, It's been happening for years. Have you seen that Netflix show called The Politician? Where this, the kid, this kid who's running for office president, and he said one day he's going to be the president of the United States, he wants to get into Harvard. And he wants to do it on his own merit. And he's got, in this TV show, he's got two stupid twin brothers that are not biologically his own brothers. They're by adoption. And the parents got the boys into Harvard because they paid, they paid money to buy a wing or buy some kind of a program to pay for Harvard. So Harvard, this is what these Ivy League schools do. They take money from the rich to let their stupid kids in. That's why you see so many people that are CEOs running companies that are screwing everything up. You know, they got those jobs because they're in the boys club. They, they come from rich families. They're not because they're smart. The smartest people are usually the poor people out here. The poor people who have to work so hard for what they've got because they've learned and they earned on their own. You get these rich kids or these, these parents that, that enable their children. They don't know how to do a damn thing. You know, I have a relative that needed a closet pole fixed. He was 10 years old. Um, his mother calls me and says, hey, uh, can you come fix the closet pole? So I said, well, I'll come, I'll come Sunday and uh, I'll show your son how to fix it. Uh, I'll take him to Home Depot with me and this and that. And the next day I get a phone call and she says, oh, he's got plans with his friends. He's not going to be able to do it. And I said, well, what day is he able to do it? Oh, um, he's just too busy. At 10 years old, he's too busy to learn how to fix things around the house. And he has no father there to teach him. And I was willing to offer to help. And this is the parents today. These are the parents today. And I'm like, you're, you're teaching your kids learned helplessness behavior. And even though we have YouTube and we have Google to learn things, so many people are like, oh, I don't know how. Where's my mommy to do it for me? Am I right or wrong? Tell me if I'm right or wrong. 
because it's not making sense. I, uh, look, I'm talking, I'm putting these in backwards. I, 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 normally, I was putting these in where, let's see, what did I do? Yeah, I, put them, I wanted to put them in where the back of the fabric goes to your face. So people wouldn't think this is the outside because the filter is too itchy to put against your face. I'll just have to tell people, put this against your face. Um, anyway, so I got to do it upside down. Anyway, um, so that was the topic of conversation. All started with these posts on Facebook where these ladies are posting and saying, oh, what is this that came with my sewing machine? Or can someone tell me how to do this? And I, I'm in the other room and I don't feel like going to my get my instruction manual. Okay, well, unless you're in a wheelchair and you can't walk, I don't see why you would write something like that. Because I've seen people in wheelchairs that do so much more for themselves than people that have two arms and two legs. And I don't understand why there's so much laziness in people who have two arms and two legs, but the people who were born or lost their limbs are doing so much more. Memorial Day. What does Memorial Day mean? What is Memorial Day? What is Veterans Day? You know, stop to think about these days, these, these holidays, and what they mean. What's the meaning behind these holidays? Why do we have these holidays off? Is it because somebody took an initiative to do something, either represent the country, fight for the country, stand up for the rights? You know, like Labor Day. You know, how come, how is it that, you know, uh, people in the 50s were able to live on one job, and today they're not? How is it that the people in the South are so against unions, but today parents are working two and three jobs to feed their kids and their families? Those union jobs provided an hourly living wage so people can have Sundays off with their kids. Everyone in the South talks about Christianity and they don't want no unions, but how many people in the South really have Sundays off to stay with their families? See, these are the things that go around in my head all the time. If you're so Christian, why are you against having Sundays off? Why are you against this? Why are you against that? Why are you against unions that provide you Sundays off? Why are you against, union, against unions that provide you equal pay? See, all this goes through my head. I know I've got to make sense. I'm trying to make sense of what people say compared to what they're, they're doing or not doing. Uh, maybe I'm thinking too hard. Maybe I'm just thinking too hard. But in the end... It's the people that when, when, you know, when, other, when those kids grow up and get out into the world, they got a rude awakening when somebody says to them, this is the job you have to do. And they're like, oh, I don't know how to do that. It's wiping the counter down. You don't know how to wipe a counter down? You don't know how to sweep a floor? No, my mom always did that. Oh, you don't know how to clean a toilet? I'm not cleaning toilets. I'm not doing that job. Well, you know what? Some of the most successful people in the world start at the bottom and work their way up and they earned their position right anyway that's my chatting for today so on a positive note i'm making more masks for my clients when they come in i ran out uh, i have been very blessed to have clients that have been following the rules and we've been, been we've been safe and I pray to God every day that we all stay safe, none of us get sick, because we need, yes, we do need to earn a living. We all need to go back to work, because, for one, the government's not giving us enough money to stay home like other countries are. Other countries are saying, we're giving our citizens a paycheck every month so they stay home so we can get this virus under control. But the United States, no, here's the United States philosophy. We want the poor pre people to get out there and, 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 and lose their lives and make them think that by keeping them home, it's against their constitutional rights because uh, we're giving all the majority of the money in tax breaks to the wealthy and corporations that don't need the money. So we're going to sc keep screwing the little people and we want enough little people to die so the more job openings come open so it looks like the unemployment is low so I can get reelected. Think about that one. Think about that one. All right. What do I got to do now? 
All right, so it's a, a cloudy kind of day. Looks like it's gonna rain, not rain, I don't know. I slept in today. Today's Monday, it was my day off from the salon. I'm off Monday and Tuesdays from the salon and I slept in today. And then I've gotta go out tomorrow outside, do some errands, and then I've gotta continue going outside and work around the house. So my job around is never done. I'm always working 24 seven. And you know what? I'm remembering what my grandmother said to me. When my, see, my grandmother worked in a foundry. She worked in a foundry and had to fight for her job because back then in her era, uh, the men did not want women in those jobs. And my grandmother was so good at her job that she made the most money. It was a peace, peacemaking, a piecework. The more work you produced, the more money you got paid. And when her fellow employees saw how much money she was making, which were gentlemen, the men put up a big stink. And my grandmother, I'm, she always told this story. She said to the foreman, she said, I'm just gonna use her, uh, Johnny as her coworker, because I can't remember what name she used, because he really was. So she says to the foreman, she says, uh, I wanna trade jobs with Johnny for a week. And the foreman says, why do you wanna do that? She says, because I'm tired of him riding my ass about women, 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 and me not being able to do my job properly and this and that, and how come I'm getting paid more? And the foreman says, yeah, you know what? That's a good idea, Harriet. Let's do it. So she switched jobs with Johnny for a week. Guess what? They switched on Monday. By the time Wednesday came around, Johnny went to the foreman and said, Harriet can have her job back. And he apologized to my grandmother, and no one ever bitched or bullied my grandmother again because my grandmother could do the work of a man. And she did. And she retired years later from that foundry. And here's what she said after she retired. I'm sorry, I retired. The day I retired is the day I got old. And grandma never sat still. She was always doing something, right? So I remember that and I says, I do not want to get old. I mean, I'm going to get old, but I don't want to sit around and get stiff. I don't want to sit around and get stiff and feel old. I want to keep working. And whether I work in the salon and then I come home and work in my house, I got to keep doing something because like grandma once told me, and I'm going to take this advice because she said this is the mistake she made. When she quit working, her body got old. And you know, my sister works in a hospital and she worked with a lady that was a nurse in her 90s. And that woman, you'd look at her, you would never know this woman was in her 90s still doing nursing job. You thought she was 50 years old. And you know, everyone asked her what her secret was and she said her secret, she never stopped working. She never stopped working, therefore she never got old. Think about that, right? Because everybody wants to retire, everybody wants to do that. But here's the thing. Here's the thing, you've got to love what you do, right? You've got to love what you do. And my grandmother loved working in the foundry. She told me, I says, Grandma, how could you like working in a place where you sweat all day, you got a pit of fire melting steel? I mean, oh my God, you know? And the funny thing is I remember grandmother, she always went to work every week, every Friday night she got her hair done. This is when the women wore the beehive or the helmet head hairdos. So she always went to work looking like a lady, you know? She never had her hair pulled in a ponytail. She always had a, lips, a little bit of lipstick on and she had her hair fixed every week. And you never know she worked in a foundry when she got out of work until you got close to her after a hard day's work and she smelled from the soot and the melting steel and the sand and the iron ore and all that stuff. But to look at her, there's two things you never know. But when you looked at her hands, Um, so anyway, she goes, she said, uh, Grandma, oh, I lost my train of thought what Grandma was saying. Uh, oh, so I said to her, so how could you love doing stuff like that? She goes, because it's a sense of accomplishment. And she said, I'm good at what I do. She says, and it gives me exercise so I don't get fat. Oh, she was always worried about getting fat. And she never got fat because she worked so hard. At least I don't remember her ever being fat when I was young. And even when I got older, I never remember her being fat. Um, but grandma told me there was a time in her life when she did get heavy because she got lazy. And I'm like, okay, well, I gotta think of that because I, I, I gained some weight being in a lockdown this month. And I'm like, I'm getting lazy and I gotta get out of this lazy habit, you know what I mean? Anyway. I hope you don't get tired of me chatting because I'm telling you what's on my mind, what's going on in the world what I'm feeling, this is me. I'm being very transparent to you all because a lot of you is really, you know, you're afraid to speak, you know, and don't be afraid to speak in, about what you see going on. Don't be, nothing will change if nobody says anything, you know, nothing will change. 
you know, conversations won't start unless somebody starts them. I'm trying to start the conversations. I'm trying to point out things that I'm seeing and I want to know from you guys why. Why certain things, why people think the way they do, why people say the things they say they do. You know, why don't people say what they really mean? That's a big thing right there. Why don't people really say what they mean? And then say to somebody, well, you should know what I meant. Well, if you didn't say what you mean, how are we supposed to know what you meant? Um, I think we all need to start taking responsibility for what we say and do and stop putting the blame on other people that they should have known what you wanted. Okay, guys, happy Memorial Day. That's my preaching for today, and I'm out of here. I uh, love you all. Take care. Wear your mask and be safe out there, okay? Okay, God bless. Bye now.